Hey, Goblin, you've been really practicing those war drums. I'll bring the generic Goblin noise! This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA and 401 Games, Canada's one stop shop for trading cards, board games, and hobby supplies. They've got an amazing loyalty program and an easy to use and robust buy list. And if you use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, your first purchase of MTG sealed and singles will be 5% off. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the Generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's patron shoutout goes to Tristan B. Thanks Tristan for helping support the channel. In today's game, we have Fred, Max, and Mika joining me, with Fred playing as a Loro deck. He keeps Atacar Wastes, Angel of Destiny, Plains, Felwar Stone, Divinity of Pride, Dovin's Veto, and an Island. Max is playing as Xanathar I'm Gonna Play Your Deck deck, keeping Terramorphic Expanse, Remote Isle, Choked Estuary, Clearwater Pathway, Mine Stone, Temple Bell, and a Rewind. Mika is playing one of his favorite decks with Faldorn, keeping Forest, Tybalt's Trickery, Escape to the Wilds, Wand of Wonders, Sakura Tribe Elder, and Two Mountains. I'm playing my Merkle deck, keeping a Swamp, Lanowar Elves, Soul Ring, Exsanguinate, Sun Petal Grove, Demonic Tutor, and a Twilight Mire. Fred wins the die roll and starts us off. He gains two in his upkeep, which will be happening all game, so I'm not going to narrate it, and he draws and plays a Sunken Ruins. Max plays a Terramorphic Expanse. I just play a Tap Sun Petal Grove. Mika plays a Mountain. Fred's got a Plains for turn, and then plays a Felwar Stone. During his end step, Max cracks the Expanse to go and find a Swamp. Max plays a Clearwater Pathway and pays 2 for a Mind Stone. I play a Twilight Mire and then pay 1 green for a Llanowar Elves. Mika's got a Forest for turn and pays 2 for Sakura Tribe Elder. Fred draws and plays an Island. He passes after that. Max pays 2 for an Arcane Signet, and then cycles a Remote Isle. He wraps things up by playing a Tap Choked Estuary, and passes to me. I draw and play a Swamp, and then cast Soul Ring. I then pay 2 for a Demonic Tutor, but Fred intervenes with a Dovin's Veto, so I decide to hit Fred for 1 with the Lanowar Elves, and pass after that. Mika's got a Forest for turn, and casts Faldorn, and passes. Fred draws and plays Watery Grave, which he has come in tapped. He then plays Shoulder at the Apocalypse and passes to Max. Max draws and loses 2 to Shouldred. He plays an Island and then casts his Commander. I draw and lose 2 as well to Shouldred and then play a Plains. I've got enough at this point for Murkool and I then pass. During my end step, Mika finally sacrifices the Sakura Tribe Elder to go and find a forest. Mika draws and loses two. He plays a mountain, and then casts the adventure side of Tinkali Hunter to get his Sakura Tribe Elder back, and then plays it from exile. This makes him a wolf token, and he then passes after that. Fred draws and gains two from Shouldred, and plays an Atacar Wastes. He then plays a Bolus' Citadel, but doesn't cast anything off the top. He just passes to Max after that. Max picks me with Xanathar in his upkeep, and then draws and loses two. He plays a wild growth from the top of my library onto his swamp, and then plays a command tower from there as well. He follows up with a great merchant of Ashfidel, which drains us all for three. He then plays Life's Legacy, sacrificing Gary, and draws two. With nothing else, Max passes. I draw and play my own Sakura Tribe Elder, and then cast Yogmoth as well. I sacrifice the Elder to go and find a basic, and it gets exiled and comes back as an enchantment thanks to Murkool. I then pass turn, and during my end step, Mika also sacrifices his Sakura Tribe Elder to go and find a basic as well. Mika draws and plays a mountain. He casts Escape to the Wilds, exiling his top 5. He then plays a command tower from among them, making a wolf token, and then casts Cultivate from Exile, making another wolf token as he goes to find a basic for the field and one for his hand. 
Fred draws and plays a windswept heath. He then sacrifices it, losing one to find a scrubland. He then actually casts a Loro, but with nothing to play off the bullets as Citadel, passes to Max after that. Max chooses Fred with Xanistar's trigger, and then draws for turn. He plays a Test of Endurance from Fred's library, and then casts Saravok's Tome from his own, and takes the initiative. He follows it up with Lightning Greaves, equipping them onto his commander. He then passes to me, and during his end step, I sacrifice my Sakur Tribe Elder Enchantment to go and find another land. I draw and play Kaya Ghost Hunter, and then cast a Doomwake Giant. With the Giant entering, all of my opponent's creatures get minus one minus one, and I then down to Kaya to double the amount of tokens I'll make this turn, and then sacrifice the Doomwake Giant to Yogmoth to make two copies of it. Two more Giants come in, giving my opponents a total of minus four minus four, and I get to draw a card and lose a life from Yogmoth. I then play Utopia Sprawl into my basic forest, which gives everything another minus two minus two, and wipes out Xanathar. Going to combat, I swing Yogmoth on the now open board at max, dealing two and taking the initiative. This lets me go and find a basic, and I then pass to Mika. Mika draws and plays a game trail. He then plays a Wand of Wonders and passes to Fred. Fred draws and casts Cleric class off the top of his library, losing some life, and then plays a Plains as well. He follows up with Grand Arbiter Augustine IV, and then an Angel of Destiny, and passes. Max draws and plays a Sunken Hollow. He's got enough to recast his commander, and once the Beholder's out, moves the Greaves onto it, and passes to me. I move further into the Undercity, scrying two, and then drawing, and playing a Woodland Cemetery. I then play a Nyx Bloom Ancient, which gives my opponent's creatures minus two minus two from the two Doomwake Giants, and I then float three green from my Lanoir Elves, and sacrifice it to bring it back as an enchantment. With it coming in, all creatures get another minus two minus two, and Grand Arbiter gets taken out. Moving to my combat step, I then swing Murkul at Fred for seven, which he takes. After that, I pass, and during my end step, Mika activates the Wand of Wonder. He rolls, and gets to cast two cards from among the exiled. And he hits a Sundering Growth, Unwind, and Narset's Reversal. Mika decides to cast only the Sundering Growth, leaving the rest in exile, and blows up one of my Doomwake Giants. Mika draws, but has nothing else to do, leaving his mana up for Wand of Wonders. Fred draws, and plays a Reliquary Tower off the top of his library. He then plays a Divinity of Pride, and then a Cosmos Elixir, and he goes to combat. He swings the Angel of Destiny at me, and I respond by sacrificing the Nyxbloom Ancient to Yogmoth to give the Angel a minus one minus one counter, and a temporary minus one minus one from the Doomwake Giant, preventing the damage, as well as exiling the Nyxbloom Ancient, so it'll come in as an enchantment copy. After combat, Fred then casts a Jani Strength of the Pride off the top of his library, and then uses Pongify on Murkul. Fred continues his Citadel hits with a Twilight Prophet, and then activates a Johnny to gain 5. He then moves to his end step, drawing from Cosmos Elixir, and passes to Max. Max chooses me with Xanathar, and I respond by sacrificing the Ape token I got from Pongify to draw a card and take the Angel of Destiny down to 0 power, thanks to Yogmoth giving it another minus 1 minus 1 counter. Max then draws, and plays a Phyrexian Tower off the top of my deck, but has nothing else after that. Mika then helps Max out by activating the Wand of Wonders, and he rolls a natural 20, but unfortunately hits Exsanguinate, Mana Drain, and Full Flowering. He decides to cast all of them, using the Mana Drain to counter the Exsanguinate, so he'll get 2 Mana Drain his next turn, and also uses Tybalt's Trickery on Full Flowering. He rolls and mills one off of it, and then hits Durin of the Yawning Portal off the Trickery, putting him into play. Max then continues his turn by casting a Temple Bell, and activates it to make us all draw. He then plays a Soul Ring, and then an Astronaut's Altar from my deck, and he moves to combat. He swings Xanathar at Kaya to take her out, and once that's done, cycles a Lonely Sandbar to draw a card. He then casts a Scepter of Eternal Glory, and once that resolves, Max passes. During his end step though, Miki uses Beast Within, and blows up my Nyxbloom Ancient to cut down my mana. 
I continue into the Undercity, goading the Angel of Destiny with the initiative on my upkeep, and then draw for turn. I play a Plains, and cast Agent of Erebos, exiling Mika's Graveyard, and then passing turn. Mika draws and gets 2 mana from the Mana Drain. He uses it to cast a Gruul Signet, and then moves to combat. He swings Durnin at max, and gets a Battle Mammoth from the top 4 exiled. After combat, he follows up with a Sandworm Convergence, and moves to his end step to make a Worm Token, and passes to Fred. Fred reveals a Witch of the Moors off the Twilight Prophet on his upkeep, draining his opponents for 5, and then draws her turn. He uses Bolus' Citadel to cast a Polluted Balance off the top, and then a Propaganda, and then a Liesa. Max is very happy because he thinks he won't die to the Angel of Destiny at this point, and Fred continues to cast spells with his Citadel, casting Legion's Landing, and then once that's out, levels up Cleric Class, and then upticks a Johnny. Fred is then forced to swing the Angel of Destiny at Max, while the Divinity of Pride and Twilight Prophet go at me. After the math shakes out, Fred jumps to 72 life though, which unfortunately for Max, means he's still dead as we move to the end step. Before that though, Fred decides to cast a Johnny Goldmane off the top, but Max counters it with an Arcane Denial. With the Johnny countered, Fred then levels up Cleric Class, which reanimates Shouldered. Moving to his end step, Fred draws a card from the Cosmos Elixir, and with the Angel of Destiny trigger on the stack, Mika activates the Want of Wonder. He rolls another 20, but between the Negate, Debt to the Debtless, and Rite of Harmony, they end up doing nothing, and Max then loses the game to the Angel trigger. I draw, and Fred draws 2 from the Arcane Denial, gaining some life from Shouldred, while I lose 2. I then play a Forest, which triggers Polluted Bond, and I lose 2, and Fred gains 2 more. I then recast Murkul, which also deals 2 to me because of Lies, and once he's out, I sacrifice the Agent of Erebos to Yogmoth, losing 1 and drawing a card, which has me losing 2 to Shouldred. The Agent then gets exiled, and comes back, and exiles Fred's graveyard, but with nothing to do to stop Fred, I have to pass to Mika. Mika draws and loses 2, and then casts Seek the Beast, losing another 2. Going to combat, he swings Durnin at Fred to try and hit something, and he exiles a Nalfish Knee. Fred then blocks with Liesa, gaining a chunk of life. Moving to his second main phase, Mika then casts Nalfish Knee, losing two more. He then activates the Wand of Wonder to try and hit something, and he's able to cast a Path to Exile, which gets copied, and he targets Liesa and Shouldered. Mika still loses two from casting the Path though, but it's a fair trade-off. He then plays a Mountain, which drains him from the Polluted Delta by 2, and once that's done, casts Battle Mammoth, and passes to Fred. Fred reveals a Dranith Magistrate to the Twilight Prophet, and we lose 2, and he draws. He then zeroes a Johnny to exile our artifacts and creatures, and casts Archangel of Thune off the top. He then plays a Morphic Pools. Fred continues his turn with the Witch of the Moors, and then Kambal. And with Kambal on the stack, I respond by casting Path to Exile and target the Angel of Destiny. We then get another round of priority, which has Fred then casting Heliod Suncrowned, and he then moves to combat again. He swings his Vampire Token at Mika, and the Flyers go at me, giving the Twilight Prophet lifelink with Heliod. I unfortunately die, and Fred jumps to triple digit life total, and he gets a ton of counters between Cleric Class, Heliod, and the Archangel of Thune. During his second main phase, Fred then casts Dranith Magistrate, and he moves to his end step, drawing a card from the Cosmos Elixir, and passing to Mika. Mika draws and overloads Mizium Mortars, taking two off Kambal. This is pretty much the best that Mika can do at this point, and he knows when he's beat since Fred only has to activate Bolus' Citadel, sacrifice a few permanents, and leave at least one attacker up to win the game. With that in mind, Mika scoops it up, and Fred wins the game. Game review time. This game was 1 hour, 23 minutes, and 26 seconds. I think it was a pretty good first showing for my Miracle deck. It did kind of exactly what I wanted it to do, which was make big mana, cheat out creature-
bring out creatures, and then turn them into enchantments. I found that Doomwake Giant and Kaya Geist Hunter particularly powerful since it meant that every subsequent enchantment basically gave the entire board minus two minus two, and because that was so good, it obviously painted a giant target on my back. Miga's Faldorn deck is great, and I really hope in the future that we see some kind of Jund Exile Matters deck. I think there's a lot of power in that archetype, and the colors support it really well. Fred's Allure deck played a lot of the cards that I wasn't surprised to see, but he played it really well. Test of Endurance, Divinity of Pride, all those fun life gain cards that matter. I think in particular my favorite thing was using the Angel of Destiny to finally take out a player. This was one of my bucket list things that happened in an EDH game, so I'm glad to actually catch it on action on camera. Max's Xanathar deck is great. I love this kind of style of deck where it basically depends on what you're playing against. Whether it's clones or playing off other people's libraries, it's very interesting and always kind of melds itself to how everyone else is playing, which often ends up with very unique and fun games. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.